Welcome to Learn Polymer with Vaughn Elements. My name is Marcus Helberg. In this code lab, you'll learn how to uh, build your own Polymer application using the Vaughn Elements component set. Before we get to the code lab, let's take a quick look at some of the core concepts that we'll be working with. Polymer is a library for working with web components, so before we get to Polymer, we first need to understand what web components are. When we're talking about web components, we're really talking about four different standards. The first standard is custom element. Custom element standard basically uh, defines a way for us to define our own custom HTML elements. As a little side note, these custom elements need to have a little dash in their name uh, just to make sure that we avoid any potential conflicts with uh, future HTML elements. So once we've created our own custom element, uh, obviously we want to have a way to include that into our document. That's where the HTML import comes in. So with an HTML import, we can include these uh, little snippets of HTML into our main document and use them in different projects. Obviously, it wouldn't be very convenient if all of these components just appeared uh, directly where we imported them. So to kind of get around that, there is a, another standard called template. And template basically just contains a little uh, piece of HTML within it. And we then have full control over where and how many times we want to actually insert that content of the template tag into our main document. The final and perhaps more most complex part of the web component spec is the shadow root. So the shadow root is really kind of the internal implementation of your component. Uh, this is a complete like DOM structure that's sandboxed within the component itself. So that means that if we, for instance, set the style name danger somewhere within our component, that's not going to affect any of the styles of the parent document when somebody uses our component. So that kind of shields the inner workings of our component. So that's web components. What's, what's Polymer then? Uh, one way of thinking of this that I, that I usually like to use is to kind of explain that Polymer is to web components and the web component standards kind of what jQuery was to JavaScript. So it's a bunch of helpers, uh, utilities, uh, things to make it easier to work with these low level, level standards. So uh, the first thing uh, that you can do with Polymer is define your own custom elements. So to do that, uh, you're going to define a DOM module that wraps both the template, which contains the HTML, the kind of semantic markup of your element, and the script tag that then bootstraps the actual custom element. You can see that the bootstrapping also contains things like properties, which are then translated into properties that your end user can then set on the actual element. A Polymer component has a few lifecycle callbacks that you can hook onto when a element gets created and destroyed. So the first lifecycle callback is the created callback. This is something that you're going to use perhaps less frequently. This is something that's uh, called directly after the component gets initialized but before any properties have been read and you shouldn't set any properties at this point. Uh, really where you typically do most of your setup work is in the create uh, ready callback. So this is when the custom component that you have is ready to be used. This is a point in time where all the properties have been read and you can interact with them. Finally, you have the attached method that gets called whenever the component actually gets inserted into the DOM and likewise a detached method that gets called whenever it gets removed from the DOM. So the created and ready callbacks will only get called once during the life cycle of a Polymer component, whereas the attached and detached methods can be called several times over the life cycle if you keep adding and removing the same component over and over again. Another major part of the Polymer library is data binding. And it comes in two different flavors. We have the square brackets that denote a one-way data binding. So this one-way data binding always flows from the parent to the child. Uh, there's also the curly bracket version. That's a two-way data binding where uh, the 
uh, child component can also update the value back up to the parent. Uh, there are a couple of gotchas when using the data binding with Polymer, especially when you're uh, working with objects or arrays. So uh, in order for it to pick up changes properly, you need to use some uh, custom custom methods, uh, namely this.push or this.set, depending on uh, what you're trying to accomplish. So here we're pushing a new element onto the people array. Uh, Polymer also comes with a bunch of helpers to just make it more convenient to work with these custom elements. Uh, so if we have a combo box like we have here and we've defined an ID for it, we can use the shorthand this dot dollar sign dot selector where the selector is the name uh, or the same thing as we defined in the ID. We'll get a handle to that component and we can then call any properties or methods. In this case, we're setting the items property to an array. Uh, there's also a, a more query selector like API where you can do do double dollar sign and then a CSS uh, selector for finding finding elements that will work the same way. Polymer also comes with a couple of extensions to the template tag. The first one being a DOM repeat. So with DOM repeat, you can pass, uh, uh, you can give an array and the template will get stamped for each item in that array. And you can then bind the values from, from that array into the stamped elements. There's also a DOM if template that's conditionally shown depending on whether or not the bound if value is true or false. And finally, Polymer is also a library of ready-made web components that you can use in your application. So basic app level components like buttons and text fields and radio buttons and things like that. Now, uh, before we get to the actual code lab, uh, just a few quick words on dev tools, as this is something that you'll uh, definitely need when you're developing. I recommend that, you're, you, that you use Chrome because it has the best support for working with and debugging web components. So let me just show you a couple of quick uh, tips that you'll, uh, you'll be using when you work with uh, web components in Chrome. So open up the dev tools and when you have the dev tools open, you can go and select any web component. Uh, using dollar sign zero, you can get a handle to it and then you can call any of the methods or read properties from the actual web component so you can inspect the state of your running application. Likewise, you can select a component and again using this dollar sign zero to get the highlighted, highlighted component you can set the value, so if you want to try out some stuff live, you can do that. You'll also likely spend some time debugging your code. And the way you can do that is to go to the Sources tab, find the source that you're working with, and put in breakpoints. Sometimes, especially when you're working with the data binding, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to see where you actually did the issue, so putting the Bower Components library folder in a blacklist will kind of help reduce the length of the stack traces and that way you can more easily find where in your code that change was triggered. And with that in place, you can go and debug your code and see the changes live. So that's all the theory that you need in order to complete this code lab. So if you're not already on the page, please go to von.github.io slash elements code lab and finish the uh, elements code lab there. If you happen to find any issues or problems with it, there's a link in the lower left hand corner for filing issues. Thank you.